Anybody? Okay, I have 415. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Would you please rise and join me with the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, Thank you. <coughs> Roll call. Sam Martin? Here. Claude Freeman? Here. And Rick Wilkins? Here. Uh, public input? Anybody? Right? You go ahead. I just really wanted to come by and thank the old homing committee for all the great work that they put on. Uh, the July 4th, the fireworks were great. And I just want the town to know that's you know it's only a group of like four or five women who basically put that all together, did all the fundraising, and how this was not a rec event. Yeah, I might have helped out, but I did not do any of the fundraising. It was all done by volunteers by the rec committee, and I would just like to thank them. I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out. Uh, I was going to try to bring it up again tonight in the regular meeting, but uh, old home week, which is now somewhere around 20 years, about the last 20 years. The tradition that had been going on a hundred years ago and then went by the wayside for a long time. Um, that committee was started by li literally a dozen people. Um, most all of whom, including myself, have now retired from that committee, but they are struggling for some help. A lot of people don't understand that the fireworks show is completely paid for through donations and fundraising. There is not one penny of tax money that goes into that. Um, so that being said, Anybody that had the opportunity to see the fireworks um, and enjoyed them, you know, a, a, a donation to their fund would be a very welcome thing because they're already getting ready to start raising money for next year. Uh, it is a small committee. It's a committee that desperately needs some help, and anybody that is willing to help, it's a great, it's a great cause. I'd point out that when when Old Home Week was incorporated as a nonprofit. One of the things that you have in your Articles of Agreement is what your goal is. Uh, I happened to write that document for the Old Homeway Committee, and the goal of the Old Homeway Committee was two things, was to promote community pride and to stimulate the local economy by hosting a wide range of events. And I would respectfully submit that for 20 years they've been reaching that goal every single year. Uh, there were campgrounds that will tell you that they are book solid that week because of all of the events that are going on. And as far as the community pride thing, I don't think there's any, any doubt whatsoever that having our own fireworks show in our own town, our own 4th of July parade, which is actually held on the 4th of July. And I say that because it was a year before Old Home Week when we actually had our 4th of July parade, July 11th, a full week later so as to not to com compete with another town. Um, so it is a, a great organization. It's worthy of our thanks and, and our support. And anybody that's willing and able, please do that. Anything else? Well, yeah. Um, uh, I just wanted to thank the uh, uh, select board for affirming my appointment uh, as a commissioner to the Lakes Region Planning Commission. And to tell you that I intend to attend all of the six or seven meetings they hold every year. And also to provide a brief written summary of what is discussed, topics, issues, uh, to draw attention to uh, any opportunities that seem to present themselves for benefit for the town, to circulate that brief uh, summary to the select board and the land use boards, anyone else who's interested in it. And I will also be available uh, for feedback to the commission for suggestions, questions, whatever you may have. In other words, I plan to be an active member. Thank you. And good. And I, Bob, I would also say this to you. Um, one of the things that has happened, as you are well aware of in your involvement with the planning board, um, and this is not the first time that the, this, this discussion has been had about, you know, what, what have you done for me? What, you know, what is the Lakes Region Planning Commission doing that's worthy of the $4,000 a year that the taxpayers are given? Um, I, I think that jury is still way out <laughs> on whether or not it's worth it. Um, I do believe and have believed for a long time that a simple annual report by that organization isn't sufficient. So I am hopeful that, um, you know, if you can come back and tell us what they're doing that affects us. Because, I mean, the Lakes Region Planning Commission, as you well know, while it serves a whole bunch of towns, I think the feeling is that a, a great deal of their emphasis around towns a whole lot larger than us. 
So. Well, yeah, we're one of 30 towns in the Lake Region uh, planning area. Uh, they do provide, and did uh, last October, a two or three page summary of what they had done for the town, and it was mostly a benefit, I think, to the Public Works Department. Uh, I felt from when Jeff Hayes, the executive director, uh, met with us at our last meeting, uh, that he made a pretty good case that, that uh, the town's benefits, what the benefits that the town receives now, uh, pretty well uh, exceed the uh, amount of money that we spend on it, $4,000. But obviously, uh, we could uh, benefit to a larger extent if we ask them for services, advice, and so on, and, and, I, and I hope we can and we'll do that. And it's not just the planning board, but the, the other land use boards who benefit as well. Well, and also, you, you tell me your thoughts. Sam just mentioned, too, that in a lot of towns, I guess, the decision in the, the funding for the uh, Lake Region planning is under the Solic Men's budget, not under the planning board budget. Um, I don't know that that necessarily normally should make much of a difference one way or the other, yeah. other than I would, I would guess that maybe our meetings are watched by more people than the, than the planning board meeting is. Yeah, right. um, but yeah, uh, no, you're absolutely right. And, and uh, part of the discussion was on that very topic, and uh, I think everyone agreed, including Jeff Hayes and the Lake Region Planning Commission, that it makes no difference uh, to us, the planning board, or uh, to the Lake Region Planning Commission. Where that uh, budget resides, it might be more sensible for the uh, selectmen to, uh, to have that. The only reason I say that is this, and it's not, it's not to cast any aspersions on the planning board at all, um, but I'm thinking more along the lines, and Ed actually brought this up, I think, a couple of weeks ago, is to, you know, do the townspeople vote to give tax money to Lake Region Planning Commission? Now the simple answer is yes, but the, the more complex answer is do they do that knowingly? Because quite frankly, it is a line item within the with, within a line item. Um, and yes, if they were at the budget hearing, you know, at the budget committee meeting, it was probably relayed exactly what that amount was. But I'm also thinking to town meeting that we don't go down through line by line by line by line by line within every budget, nor could we. It would take three days. So it might make more sense to break that out a little more uh, visibly, right? visibly so that then the, 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 the answer would be yes, not only was it voted on, but, but they knew they voted on it. Well, no, I think that's a, a good point. And, 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 and more transparency is always welcome. I, I do hope that either way the town goes forward and pays the dues so we can participate fully this year so that by, time, by the time we have a, the next town meeting, we can uh, explain what exactly the town has gotten out of it and that we've actually gotten more than we're currently getting. Am I right, though, that we can currently participate even without paying the dues? We can't. I think we would not have a vote, but there's probably no reason why that I could not attend the commission meetings mm -hmm. and the public meetings mm -hmm. and report back on what's said, whether they want to listen to me or let me join in the discussion. I don't know. Certainly, wouldn't have a vote. Okay. Babe, do you want to add something to this? Yeah. But there may be other benefits that you wouldn't receive, uh, like the hazardous waste collection. Uh, well, maybe we use the money some of the time. Without that, uh, I, I don't know. They said you could participate, you just couldn't vote. Right. You can participate, they can is. listen to you, but you just can't vote. And, and the, major, the major person that gets the benefits from that is Brad, who votes at that at, uh, for DOT. Put the tax meetings. Right. So and that sort of falls underneath the selectman's budget. So that's why I made that suggestion. Also a, a right. that, uh, that we receive annually as part of that membership. But there are a number of other things, including uh, this was news to me when Jeff Hayes explained this, and, and I would urge you to, to, to meet with him, and he and he is eager to meet with you also if you have a chance. Uh, they also devote themselves, at least part-time, to economic development uh, topics. They have an economic development uh, strategizing process that goes on, and uh, surely we can uh, find some, at least, uh, uh, marginal benefit there. Uh, so that's one of the components of their, of their work. Okay. Ed? What happened, it, the newspaper report stated that, quote, you lose a seat at the table, mm -hmm. and that made my head spin. Because again, I'll just repeat what I said last time: is that I'm on Stratford Regional Planning Commission, and they have 
overpopulation of 50,000, so they are an MPO, which is a federal statute. What I found out is I misstated is that we still get a vote down in Stratford, Brookfield, even though we don't pay dues because it's an MPO, Metropolitan Planning Organization. The um, Lakes Region Planning Commission, or that umbrella, the overlapping responsibilities, they are not. They're I not had about 50,000 in nope. the 32 towns? They're considered a rural planning commission. And right. a, the jury is still out on the state statute and how I still believe, it's my belief, that Lakes Region cannot deny you a vote. And I, I hope everybody has looked at their, yeah. their budget. You saw this. I did. And I just want to, this is, this is their budget. Lakes Region Planning Commission budget, this is their revenues, and this is their expenditures. I misstated, Stratford's, um, Stratford, Region, Stratford Regional Planning Commission does get a lot of money from the federal government because they're an MPO. I misstated because I said most of the Lakes Region Planning Commission's budget is paid for by the feds, but I misstated because it's, it's the state. The state is 44%, federal is 9%. That's the revenue. 44 and 9. Their expenditures are 49% labor and 30% benefits. Now, if you look at this pie chart, unless I'm, listen, I'm not a budget genius. Maybe it's just me. But this, this looks like not a very good use of our tax money. The other issue I have, and I just thought of this like maybe five hours ago, is that the state gives them money. So that means we are taxed, the state takes the taxes, sends it to the Regional Planning Commission, and now they're asking you to pay dues. Now he may, he, Jeffrey Hayes, the, the organization may legally be able to do that because the way the statute's written, but I don't think that's fair. If they're already taking our money, now we're being paid, now we're going to be told we have to pay dues on top of it. Now, I don't think that's that's right if, at all. If I may, this is a discussion that would greatly benefit from uh, the person who knows the most about the issue, which would be Jeff Hayes. Mm -hmm. He's not here, uh, and so we're having a kind of one-sided discussion. Uh, so rather than getting too exactly. deeply into the weeds here, that uh, speaks pretty loudly. Well, this is and my, that's what well, I spoke to the other night. Yeah, hold on, this hold is on, just my it is just my, this is just my public comment. The pie chart doesn't show you details. Right, hold the on floor. a second. This is my public comment. I'm not asking to go back and forth. I'm, I'm actually talking to Jeffrey Hayes. We actually had a very constructive conversation at the planning board and also via email. And he will, sh he will show. But I just thought of this now, and I needed, I needed this information to be out, and this is my public comment. Because this, these are, this is a fact. Perhaps before I wasn't as factual when I said federal government's most of their uh, budget. But this needs to be questioned, and I think he, sh he should answer the question of why we're being paid double or we're being taxed double. So I just don't think that's fair. Which, and just to answer real quickly, we, we are we are going to have him. Here. He was actually offered to come here. It was my suggestion that he should first go and address the planning board, since it was the planning board who decided not to pay the dues. So I don't have any opposition whatsoever to listening to the man, and, and, and we will make that invitation. Uh, but that's that's why we actually. Excuse me. He actually just sent an email before this meeting requesting. Money. Good. Uh, any that's Monday night. It's fine with me. Uh, so let, we actually steered him to you folks first because it was your decision not to, not to punt. No, I think that's, that's a good idea. Thank you. Okay. Do you have anything more to add to that? No, 79% of the money is either benefits or labor. Okay. And I brought that up the other night when I talked to them about salaries. Which I don't have and, and, and I guess that doesn't surprise me, right. but I, what, I, what I think our focus ought to be, respectfully, is are we getting more than $4,200 in benefit from it? And will we not still get that same benefit without spending the $4,200? That to me seems to be the central question. Um, if we get the same access, if we, then without the $4,200, and I think we quite frankly look a little bit like fools to give them the $4,200. If, if we're losing something, then I, then I I think we need to evaluate what we're losing. Yeah, I'm not sure what access means. And you, it's a point you need to press, I think. Uh, access, to we'll to that that again. Again. access to uh, active advice, assist assistance, and so on on issues is something else again, perhaps. So yeah, all these are good questions for Mr. Hayes, absolutely. 
uh, Brad, briefly, um, your take on this again, because that's kind of coming to us from the back door. Right. Uh, wasn't our idea, but we do get a lot of benefit <laughs> through the public works on this. A uh, couple things that they they are very big on is uh, involvement with a ten-year plan. Yep. Um, as you're probably aware, you know, ten years ago they had a ten-year plan that was would have taken twenty to twenty-five years to fund. They've cut it back, so it's actually a realistic 10-year plan now. And there are a lot of projects in Ossipy in the 10 years. And they all survived all those cuts, which I was you know, keeping an eye on, very, very thankful for on that. And they were also very involved, too, when we, when we started doing these road safety audits at the Route 171 28 intersection. We conducted another one at the uh, Route 16, uh, uh, Shaw Road, Road, and then down by uh, yeah, Pine River, actually, they declined to do the one on Pine River Road because right. the work, there wasn't enough the data accident. there. But they did do another one down at Granite Road in 171 and in Route 16 also. So just right there alone, we've gotten quite a bit of benefit out of their um, involvement with with their, uh, you know, the processes there for the, you know, you know, come more through the Public Works Department than, than anywhere else in town. Okay. The other quick question, and you probably won't know an answer, but I would like you to get an answer before next Monday. Well, I don't know. Well, we have it in as well. Is the decision for the town that the town has made to not fund the dues, is that going to affect the hazardous waste collection, which we have scheduled for August? I don't believe so, because we're also, because we pay into that. We have a fee that we pay into that. And the grant that pays the other part of that is from DES. Okay. Um, that's how, the, how that whole uh, collection is funded through the ES grant cost? and through the town participation. Okay. So, okay. what does that cost us? This year, I think it was forty-seven, forty-eight hundred dollars, right around that range. Yeah, seven fourteen. So, share. Okay. And that's it. All the towns collected together are about one third of the cost of that. Then the DES pays about the other two thirds of that cost. Mm -hmm. I believe that's about the range that it goes in. Okay. Because right. it's one of the things that they break that's broken out on this pie chart was that 14% of their expenditures are on the household as of this week. And I just want to make sure that that that's included in right. the state revenue. All right. Anything else on the public input? Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Bryce Northup. I was here I remember you. a few months ago yes, <laughs> to ask for approval to create a trail on the town property on Andy Nichols Road. Yep. I've since finished that project. I have some documentation if you're interested in seeing that. I am. And I would like to ask for your approval and acceptance of the project. Okay. There's a rough map. Mm -hmm. And here are some pictures of the finished trail. Very nice. I don't know how much we guess, how much how much of this we can get. I don't know how much of them they heard, uh, but this young man approached us about doing an Eagle Scout project um, on land that is managed by our conservation commission down at Beach River Mill. Um, by all accounts, I, I, I've talked with a couple of people. I myself have not made it down there, but I know a couple who did and thought and were quite impressed. So you did a good job. Okay. Yep. Very good job. Yep. Yeah. So, yes. Thank you. So you need from us your approval that it's been completed to our satisfaction, right? Yes, I'm a bit pleased to talk with the, the Boy Scouts. Okay. Uh, I make a motion that we, or, or that I'd be allowed to sign this document on behalf of both. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. Here? Yes, or up here? Yes, or up here. I should have said that. Can you send me these photographs? Yes. Yes. Um, Ossipi.site at gmail. Dot S-I-T-E at gmail. I'd like to post this on the conservation. We have a list of conservation lands. Thank you. Yes, I'd love to see them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, when do, so once they've accepted that, how long before you get your eagle? Uh, it kind of depends. There's a 
few weeks to process the application, and then I have to attend an Eagle Scout Board of Review, and that's held every month. So okay. I'm not really sure what that will be. All right. When they uh, when you have when they have your court, let us know. Let us know. Yep. Okay. okay. Thank you. Rick, if I can add too, I know we've had conversations at the Conservation Commission about you know, helping out with signage, and uh, I, I've had a conversation with a couple of people about maybe contacting the uh, Botech and have them build the sign to our specifications so that we can get the graphic part up. And, and then, of course, uh, I understand that the, the uh, parking area engineering is in the works. Uh, when I when I brought that up in, at the meeting, there was some question as to what the timetable was on it, but uh, it'll be great to have access to that. It's a great site. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's not, and then, yeah. you know, this kind of came about quite quickly. Yeah. Um, and he, in fact, his, he was at his deadline and needed needed our signature to approve it. So, yeah. on the normal channels, I would have liked to have been a little bit more back and forth with the Conservation Commission and us, but. Time was of the essence, and I certainly didn't want to stop him from doing the project. So. Yeah, they, they had approached the commission yep. many, many, well, he had many months ago, but with the transition, the commission yep. that kind of went through the current service. Yep. We never heard about yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, right. Ralph is working on the signs with the high school. Ralph, uh, yes. Ralph the king yes. is working yeah. on the signs. Good. Okay. Anything else from the public input before we move into the business folder? All right. Uh, first thing we have is the minutes of the Silicon's work session in non-public. Oop, which brings me up. We held a non-public session earlier this afternoon upstairs. Um, it was under RSA 91A32A for personnel and A32E for legal. And I make a motion we seal those minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, now under the red folder. Um, the minutes of the Seligman's work session on Monday, July 3rd. I make a motion to accept them as printed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> and we have the minutes of the Seligman's meeting, which occurred on Monday, July 3rd. I make a motion to accept them as printed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have the check voucher totals. Payroll for week ending 7 8 is $32,946.72. Payroll taxes in the amount of $10,175.11. And accounts payable for week ending 7 1 of $129,046.31. For a total dispersed last week of $172,168.14. I make a motion to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. These again are the check voucher totals. We review and initial every bill that comes in, but these are then put into batches depending on where they have to go. that the water and sewer are now going to be included in this? It's already included, and then what we do is we request a reimbursement back from the Correct. Department. So the water and sewer uh, have been in the process of transitioning, and they are finally now included in with our voucher totals. Signature lines this week than normal. And it may seem at times like we blow through some of this stuff pretty quickly, but we all individually have had a chance to review everything that's in the file before the meeting. So it's stuff that's not new to us. Uh, this is a memo to the Board of Select Men from Brad Harriman uh, regarding an announcement signed at Town Hall. Uh, the construction of a new permanent sign in front of Town Hall for various announcements and our messages would, would cost about $1,500 for the highway crew doing the construction. The sign would consist of a base made of the Allen block similar to what was used at Mill Pond, 
an eight by four, an eight foot by four foot message board with a hinged plexiglass cover set, of, set inside of the six by six timber frame. See attached sketch. Uh, we've discussed about uh, putting a better message sign out front, more aesthetically pleasing one where different rec events, et cetera, et cetera, can be announced. Any thoughts on this? Well, any thoughts on the sign? Um, I make a motion that we have Brad proceed with the construction of this changing message sign or message board message sign up on the front lawn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Another thing we've discussed in the past, and this is a memo from Brad, the cost to build a quote unquote picket fence along the two sides of the Chick fil church that faces the road would cost about $1,200. This will be a four foot high cedar picket fence with pressure treated post and framework. Construction will be completed by the highway department. The Chickville Church, which we acquired by gift last year, um, has always had an issue with people cutting the corner off and therefore destroying um, part of the lawn, <laughs> quite frankly, of the, of the, of the church. Um, we thought about and believed that probably the construction of some sort of a aesthetically pleasing fence along that would kind of protect everything. Any thoughts? No, I think we should do it. Um, I make a motion that we proceed with the construction of this fence on the two sides of the Chick the Church. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Did you vote? Yes. Okay. Okay. I'll just we'll defer to Bill two on that. I think you plan on doing two gates on that two two yeah two small yep. gates. So coming through the side so yep. get access. Okay. Good. Um, this is a uh, uh, conflict of interest waiver and a representation agreement. We, people will remember if they've watched any of the meetings of late, we are currently in the process of trying to renegotiate our agreement with our cable provider. It was the same contract which has been in place for some 17 years. Uh, we have always, and I continue, I continue to get complaints from people on certain roads of town that do not have access to the cable and therefore don't have access to the internet in many, in many cases. I believe that the Board of Selectmen way back when should have required that every single road be wired, but they didn't. So consequently, the cable company has not had to install cable onto every road in town, only those roads that meet a certain um, density of houses that was set by the cable company. Um, long story short, over a year ago, we had to notify them of our intent not to renew the contract, which we did. We gave them the year's notice, which means that shortly uh, our contract with them is gone. So we need to renegotiate it. It is, there are some pretty complex legal issues with that. Um, so this is uh, DTC lawyers, um, Donald, Donahue Tucker and Sandella which we are currently un involved with in the Fairpoint appeal. appeal, which goes back to an issue of tax assessment. So they are going to be representing several different towns in an effort to renegotiate a better contract with, well now it's Spectrum, it was Time Warner. Mm -hmm. And our only goal is to try to expand that service to as many Osby residents as we can. With that in mind, this is a, again just a part, a part of the process and I don't profess that it's going to be anything done super quickly, but we, it's something that has been on our radar now for over a year when we decided not to renew in an effort to try to get to here and we'll see where it leads us. We, we may get nothing, but nothing ventured, nothing gained. Um, with that, I make a motion that we sign this representation agreement to begin that process of renegotiating our cable agreement. Second. Any discussion? Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And we'll see where it takes us. Rick, how much, what percentage of the town does that coverage right 
Uh, it's, 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 I, I, can give, I can provide you a map. I'm going to say, I, I, I've been it since the 70, 60 to 70, 60 to 70 percent. Um, the, the issue really, I think, is going to hinge on the definition of the density needed. And I get it. Listen, I, I, you know, I'm not an idiot. I, I, the cable company is not going to want to run three miles of cable to pick up one customer. I get it. Um, I think they could have done that and should have done that back when it was first done, but that's neither here nor there. But what they are requiring for a population density, I think, is unrealistic, and I think it's not. I think it's not fake. I, I think that I think that the argument could be made that it is in fact cost effective for them to do. Uh, more than what they're doing. And if we can extend it to more people, then that's what we're going to try to do. I'm sorry, I should have passed it. <laughs> we have a copy of a check here um, of $389.10 we re received from Northeast Recovery. That was on uh, scrap metal. We have an application. This is to the Department of Revenue Administration. It's something we have to file every year. And it's an application for reimbursement to towns and cities in which federal and state forest land is situated. Um, we have about $1.5, $1.6 million worth of assessed land in the town of Osby, which is either state or, um, well, it's all state forest. Yeah, state forest. Um, and we request reimbursement. We won't get the full tax value by any segments of the word, but we do get some money in lieu of the taxes which would normally be paid on that property. I make a motion to sign it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. But you have to apply. They don't just send it. <laughs> um, I don't remember seeing this in the bio earlier. I knew what it's it was in the, uh, it's for the water filtration grant that we get on an annual basis. Water filtration grant. We received a check from the state of New Hampshire uh, for $5,783. We have a memo from Brad Harriman. This is on the new meter installation for the water system. We received a quote from New England Backflow Company, company for the installation of the new meters in Ossipee. Their price for the 5 8 meter is $125 per meter plus any additional materials if needed. This results in a $10,000 reduction on our original per year estimate. Year one would now be $58,000, year two and three would be $43,000. New England Backflow Incorporated specializes in this type of work and came highly recommended by Dave Harris of TI Sales, who is the distributor for Neptune meters, which we are using. But the board's Approval, we will order the materials and schedule the installation. <coughs> How many other companies are out there that do this, though? I, mean, I really don't know. These guys work a lot with these type with the meter supply companies like <coughs> uh, TI Sales, EJ Prescott. Um, I don't know, Prescott might do their own installations. I'm not they sure. They probably do, but they're not going to do. They're not doing ours they're anyway. Do ours yeah. 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 No, I, I, my concern is, back. and my thought is this: that it, 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 it's, a, it's a large enough contract, and while we are not required to go out to bid on services, um, it's not the same as purchasing equipment. Um, I do think there could, should, there could be some benefit to the taxpayer by doing that, in the sense that because of the size of the contract being uh, three years and a total of four, you know, hundred and two thousand dollars, uh, uh, oh, forty-two thousand dollars altogether. Over first three year, years. for three all, oh, the installation part alone would be forty-two thousand okay. over three years. All right. So. Um, it may be beneficial and it may in fact if we did a three you know a full contract they may sharpen that pencil even more um i think it's, i think it's worth a shot I, I you know i think we should order the meetings i don't think we should delay on that um i'd like to get them in um there was also some talk about and we talked about this before what about the thoughts of, of using local plumbers to be able to install well, that's where we got the original estimate from, and they were about two hundred twenty dollars per meter. From who? The plumber we used um, for the garage and done some work around here. Okay. Um, we went all contacted one at the time. Figured if we were going to go that route, we talked to two or three, but uh, 
you think it would be about you know two hundred twenty dollars per per unit to put in. Yeah. So yeah. there's quite a bit of savings here. And when the backflow we use them for all the backflow, they come into town and and do all the backflows at the school and yep. wherever. This is what they do with their licensed yeah. operators and. But we can still check. We'll still check. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if it's already with you, my thoughts are they haven't at least contact a couple more companies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, see what you get for a price from them, mm -hmm. um, and then maybe tell you know maybe let these folks know that you know that we are looking and see if they'll shop on their pencil a little bit more. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And then we'll, there's no there's no dire rush. We can, we can decide it next month. You know, hopefully have something next month. Yeah. That's are we, okay. Are we getting the quotes on on paper or just verbal? Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. okay. All right. Uh, we have the highway department work log, which is here in the folder for anybody to look at if they need it uh, or want to. It's here. We have a request for abatement. This is on map 29, lot 1, sub 173. It was an original assessment of 11400 It is zero now, which <laughs> results in a refund of $123. This is one of those infamous campus that was not on site as of April 1st. I make a motion we approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have a request for abatement. No, this is a long, this is a long one. This is on map 20, uh, map 248, lot 29, map 248, lot 31, map 248, lot 32, this is a, a case that has been going on for some time that was appealed to Superior Court. Where we have come to an agreement on assessed values on these four parcels of land. The net result, after a whole lot of money spent, is on the first lot it results in a refund of $81.44. On the second lot, a refund of $264.63. On the third lot, a refund of $459.56. There's only three lots, I'm sorry. Three lots. I make a motion, we approve it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Payroll request reimbursement request in the amount of five thousand one hundred thirty dollars and eighty six cents. Make a motion we sign. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Ellen, do you need anything to advertise the part time secretary's position? I don't believe so. I think that um, we updated the job description. We did update that, yeah. yeah so, no, I think we're okay. on There is a uh, the Current secretary at the water and sewer department has ended her employment with the town, and we will be immediately advertising for a replacement. Um, it will be, I believe, a job right now. It's, it's going to be 15 hours a week, uh, which will be over three days, so three five-hour days. And the details of that will be available shortly. It hasn't been posted yet. We just made a couple of decisions that were necessary on that this afternoon. So. That will be advertised shortly for anybody who might be interested. Uh, old business. Anything on the, anything back from the court yet on the dilapidated building? Um, he is waiting for a court date on 44 Danville Road. That's the only one that's left out of the two so far. Okay. The other one was taken care of, correct? Correct. All right. Uh, zoning violations. The, the only one that, uh, the one that I'm ready to answer on tonight is the one that was brought up in the public meeting about a, uh, 
somebody staying in a camper on uh, property in Windsock Village. Um, it is not on a separate lot. It's as part of a house. There is a true question as to whether or not they are in violation of the zoning because it allows them to do it for 14 days, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, we've instructed. We have met with our code enforcement officer and, and given him instructions to go back to the complainant with an answer. Uh, oh, that's one of the, the other thing. I'm sorry. There's another couple of things. This this application for abatement that was in the water and sewer folder is that one you're familiar with? I thought this was one that we dealt with before, but it's a new one. I'm not familiar with it. Uh, I, there's a copy of that at the office. I don't even. All right. Can you can you look into that and get back to us next week with a recommendation? Yeah. 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 Thought, Sorry. Yeah. There's also a, in the water and sewer file, which I didn't see, there's a water and sewer warrant for the tax collector to collect $80. I make a motion we approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sorry about that. All right. The water and sewer department rules and regulations, we have now all had a chance to read them. Um, there is nothing, there's no problem with the substance, but our editor in chief has found a whole bunch of grammar and, and uh, grammar, grammar, grammar problems and, and, a few, and, a, and a few misspellings. So she will be correcting those items and then we will actually vote on it and adopt it next week. But I don't have any issue with the content. We, we've all read it and it was at the time. So, okay. Fred, do you have that file saved? I do. Okay, can you forward it to Sam? Or yeah. forward it to me and I'll forward it to Sam. Yeah. So, we didn't hire him to be English majors. So. Well, I think it's good when it goes ah. online, I don't okay. care. <laughs> All right, uh, anything else in the old business? Um, yes. Uh, Michael Dugas called and left a message for me. He would like to set up a meeting on either August 7th or August 14th to have another public information night on the intersection 171, 171 and 28 improvements and just where they're at. So I so will be better. coordinating right. that with him tomorrow. When, when is that? Uh, either August 7th or the 14th. He left it up to me, so I just have to check the schedule and make sure there's no other okay. commitments. And he's going to come in as part of the Monday night meeting? Yeah. Okay, good. Good, good. Good. Anything else on your old business? Any new business? I will after you adjourn. Hmm? I will after you adjourn. Okay. The new bridge looks great. Looks really nice. Yes. I mean, Completed. it doesn't even open. look like a dead one. No. It just looks normal. Yeah. Well, uh, Bob, you wanted to discuss an area on the Bell Road where the retainer wall is? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, this new business. Okay. Um, Brad or Billy, um, the new wall up at well, Moatville Road, not the one on the mountain road, but the one up. Oh, up the big one. Yeah, the big one. The big yeah. one. Is there any way that we can, on the left side of the road going up, I'm, yeah, left, <laughs> left. Right. On the right side of the road going up, is there any way that we can flatten that out over there to so people can walk on it without getting killed on that road? I'll tell you, we, we were up by there the other day, and uh, there was a lady pushing a baby carriage, and just the normal speed of somebody coming around here. I thought she was going to get wiped out. I mean, they need a place to walk. It's a, it's a big, steep bank right there. The there's nothing we can... I kind of looked at it today. It looks like there's, you know, there might be a... Just so we can just clean it up for people oh, to walk on it. Probably mow it. Yeah, I mean, just so people can walk on it. I mean, the lady in the baby carriage, she almost got wiped out. I mean, it was pretty scary. Right way too fast, it? Yeah, it, it, I mean, not, not, you know, I ain't going to say anybody's driving too fast. Um, but uh, we need a place for people to at least walk off the road there. Yeah, and I know there's a little dirt spot. And you are right, it does go right off. Yeah, I'll take a look at it. Like we can take a look at it. Head, yeah, fill in the, uh, yeah. That would be nice to do that. This will be one of the places to walk. It's very dangerous. Uh, anything else in the new business? Nope. All right, anything? Um, the other thing I'll just add on a little bit to what Ellen was talking about with Mike Dugas there on the Route 28-171. Um, I contacted him last week. He also responded saying that they have developed a plan for a roundabout that they can, they, they're going to kind of present and talk about that they can actually feel like they can get behind and, and support um, that project there. So 
just give you a heads up that that's they are that's still on the table there. They worked on a plan that either tricks it down some or did some didn't dare to make it um, so that it might meet their criteria and be able to fund it too. So uh, I thought that was encouraging news to hear that. So I just want to share that with you. Good. Anything's going to be better than what we're doing down there now. Yep. So, um, you know, it wouldn't have been my first choice. I still think light might have been a simpler solution. But I'm not going to argue with the. Uh, no, I shouldn't say that. I love arguing with the state of I won't say that. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to argue with the fact that we want to get something done down there, which needs to happen. So. One other thing, too, I did hear through some of my contacts out of DOT, they ended up with a surplus of about. I believe it was around $32 million, and they're going to redistribute that out to the towns through the Block A grant program. So starting their first quarter, which is, you know, starts July 1st, they're just starting their first quarter now, the town should be seeing a significant increase in the block grant checks that we get on a quarterly basis there. So okay. I thought you guys would be interested to hear that. That's it's always well received. Yeah. And then also just remind everybody that uh, Saturday, August 5th is our household hazardous waste collection. It is. Again, just uh, we'll keep notified Matt every time until till we have it. So okay. get the word out. Okay. Uh, the only other thing I have in new business is, you know, I don't think I brought it up last week, we are in receipt of the draft of our annual audit for last year. Um, so far, so good. Um, I'm still reading it. It's, they get somewhat long and somewhat dry, but initially everything looks good. Um, our surplus is up north of 1.1 million, which is always a good thing. And uh, I haven't even got to the point where, where they make recommendations on management, which they always do. And then we'll look at what policies and procedures we need to make and improve and continue to improve to, to the audits. So, yeah, right now it looks good. I have one more thing. I thought it was going to get Rick wound up on this, but Brad, that bridge is going to rock right where it is. Are we going to get that thing? Back over the river. Is anything going on with it? It's in, the the it. It over. It's in final design. How long is it going to be in final design? Well, it should be ready to, you that know, crazy. once it all goes through the DOT, they give us the go ahead that we put it out to bid. That's going to be late summer, early fall before that goes out to bid. So, um, another year? It'll be started, hopefully started this fall, but the bulk of the work will be next year. I think you're going to have to start rebuilding it next year. Never mind, get it over there. I mean, come on. It's getting ridiculous. I mean, this is re really, I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. Ten years. No. Two million dollars. Eleven. Eleven years. Well, eleven, yeah. Well, Two million dollars. I am still convinced I may be wrong, but I don't I think I'd I am. Nope. <laughs> if this were a town, so if this were a town-run project, it would have been done in three years for a half a million bucks. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I believe that. See one bad word. But Something. anyway, no, no, I'm not saying no bad words. Nothing. <laughs> I'm trying to turn over new leaf. Okay, Pinocchio. Okay, Pinocchio. Okay. Anybody have anything else? Yeah. yeah. Last Saturday, we did hold our Get Wild program. <laughs> Uh, fish hatchery and it was a very successful event. We had a total of 77 people attend this year, which is 30 over last year. Uh, it was, as Sam will tell you, a very successful event. Uh, and she did put together a, a great slideshow, which I happened to see late yesterday. And uh, several people have already talked to me about it and they said, uh, oh, let's get that on the website. And I said, I'm sure it's already there. <laughs> But uh, it was a great event, and uh, I, I look forward to seeing that happen again next year, and maybe even having a higher turnout. So, I'm actually glad you mentioned down to the fish hatchery because we are uh, still continuing to meet with the folks down there, um, and renewing and renewing their lease. Uh, but as importantly, right now, trying to address some of the very serious things that need to be done on the for the safety of the property down there and whose responsibility is what and when and how we're getting that done. We have met with them once and we actually had to postpone the last meeting, but we'll be meeting with them again shortly trying to keep that in process as well. Do you know what, the, what are those big round metal things that are down there laying on the ground? I have no idea what you're talking about. The ones in back? Yeah. The green ones? Those were picked up from another facility someplace and he does not use those. And I asked him if he'd be interested in selling them. We should send them over to the scrap metal place. I think they're fiberglass or plastic. Yeah. Oh, they are. Plastic. Yeah, I think they're fiberglass. Okay. Well, they there are. might be a market for them. <laughs> there might actually be a market for them. Okay. 
Oui. Um, will the cable negotiations affect people who have cable? No. No. It, it, I, I don't anticipate that anybody who doesn't already who is already on cable won't even know that this is going on. Uh, it will be. It's it's more about us trying to get the cable company to expand its its range of service to more and more people in town. Um, because it's not just about cable TV anymore. It really isn't. It's about the it's about the internet access. It's about people's ability to work from home, which so many are doing. Um, there are it's 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 not just about whether or not they get to watch Channel Nine News anymore. So, uh, are you talking to uh, an alternative cable company that might be more amenable to uh, expanding uh, the services as you want? No, at this um, only because you know I think. What we're hoping is by joining together with several of the towns who are also trying to do that, that we're going to give ourselves some negotiating strength. Yeah. Because otherwise, quite frankly, Spectrum owns all of the cable lines. Right. I don't think we are a big enough market for, to attract another company to come in. Uh, again, I don't know how successful we can be with this, but all I know is nothing was going to change if we didn't at least try to. And then we'll just see where it takes us. But we're hoping by joining with these other towns and getting some representation from a company that knows what they're doing, that we can gain that we can gain some ground. We'll, we'll see. Ed. I'm interested in this because Brookfield doesn't have a franchise. Wakefield had the same issue. They wanted to build out, and they had to go through that. I want to know what other towns are involved in this, and could I mention this at Brookfield's meeting on Tuesday and have them join it? Absolutely. I don't have the list of towns handy, but I can get it to you. Does it cost anything to join? This yes, and it's, it's going to be split between all the towns. Yeah, just like right now, I mean, the one that we're involved with with, with uh, Fairfield, um, we periodically get a bill, and it's it's our small portion of all of the different towns. Uh, but it's got you know again some expertise in trying to get that get that resolved. So you know, I, I think the more the merrier, and I think the, quite frankly, the more towns that do join, the more of a bargaining you know bargaining strength that they'll have. So. Because I, I sparked up the, um, the Brookfield Cable Committee again, mm -hmm. and trying to get the cable company to do anything, they just don't want to. You know, so I'm wondering if, if we can combine well, forces. And, here. Sure. And in our in our case, they absolutely were not only not only did they want to do anything, they weren't required to do anything so long as that contract was current. Yeah. And and one of the other things that I thought was pretty interesting is, I mean, a lot of a lot of contracts you have to give 30 days notice to break it. This one, you have to give a year's notice. <laughs> who signed that? Well, who it signed was a contract 17 years ago. You, you have to give them a year's notice in order to in order to break the contract. So it's like you have to. I mean, it takes. Thankfully, it came up and we discussed it and we made the, you know, made the notification to them that we were going to renegotiate a year in advance. So if you if you miss that deadline, then you got another year to wait. How can one, three one board? Years to wait. It renewed. That's right. So it would have automatically renewed unless we canceled. And if we didn't cancel it, then we would have had to literally wait another three years. <laughs> so, yeah. So a past board isn't binding you to something. Or are they? See, I don't know how that's possible. The original contract, which had been in place for 16 or 17 years, was set up so and agreed upon that it would automatically renew every three years unless you gave them a year's notice of a desire to renegotiate. Well, make sure you read the, uh, the contracts. So, oh, yeah. But, Which is why we've sought legal for help. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll see where it takes us. We're trying. Anything else? Uh, we don't have a need for a non public for tests tonight. Good. If there are anything else? If there's not, I make a motion we adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. you can't have it.